up since the 50s and 60s. Men like Guy Cassidy, Eldred Eccles, Andrew Connolly, these men, good missionaries of old, started the missions back in the 50s and 60s, and it is still going on today. The mission right now, the mission work, has five different areas. It has a school of preaching, a primary and a secondary school, which is a lot like CRA. It has a mission hospital. It also has evangelistic outreach to the community, regular mission evangelism, which involves church planning, evangelism, Bible studies, so on and so forth like that. The Chamala Bible Institute is a two-year school of preaching. Uh, and then we offer a bachelor degree. Now these guys, they come in for two years. They leave their wives and children back in the village. And they come study for two years because they know the importance of good Bible training. Now if I had more than 22 minutes, I would tell you all about the Bear Valley Extension Program, which is a fantastic work. And if I had more time, I would tell you, folks, about how, you know, Chad Wagner can go and do, you know, whatever mission work you want to do, right? You move to the mission field and you do the best work you can possibly do. And if you did that work for 10 years and you had 10 men do that work, you had 10 men that you converted to get to join the work with you, that would be a good work. That would be a good work. But what if you could go over there and you could train those 10 men, not work, not be involved heavily in mission work, but if your primary purpose was to go and to train men to preach the gospel, then you can multiply your impact by, by 10. So what if we had our missionaries over there and the impact of their mission work was multiplied by 10? That, folks, is the genius of the Vega Valley Bible Institute Extension Program, which if I had more time, like I said, I would love to tell you about it because it's, it's a fantastic work. The Jamala School of Preaching is one of the extension schools with the Bear Valley Extension Program. These men, they come in, they study for two years, they finish with a bachelor's degree. We also offer a master's degree where after they graduate, they have the ability to come back to the school about twice or three times a year, and they have more in-depth study of the Word of God. These guys come from countries like Tanzania, of course, but also Malawi, Zambia, several different countries in the entire area, they come to the Jamala Mission because they know it is a good quality school of preaching. We have American Bible teachers coming over there about every three months to assist us in the teaching of local people to do the local evangelism. <laughs> Folks, that is the key to evangelistic outreach, getting local men to do the local work. <laughs> we have an English and a Swahili track. Now, we have an English track where if you can read English and write English, then you'll have your bachelor's degree work in, uh, in English. But there's a lot of good brothers over there who want to preach and teach the Word of God who cannot read and write English. And so we also have classes from Swahili, which is native language. English and Swahili track. We have six teachers. One of those guys in an is an American from Georgia. His name is Gary Hill. Fantastic guy. He reminds me of Indiana Jones, who's just that kind of person. Gary Hill is over there. We have six teachers, and right now there are 26 bachelor students and 16 master students coming back in. Folks, that's about 40 men right now studying the Word of God. And it's because of the efforts of native people to teach the gospel. It's because of Americans who are willing to give to that work and also to go and teach is what's making that possible. Fantastic work that is going on. And now every weekend, just about those students go out to the local villages to teach and preach the Word of God to work with local churches. In 2011, 60 plus baptisms was associated with just the students going out on weekends and doing what they can do on the weekends. Sixty folks part of the Lord's Church because of that work. This is a picture of some of the students we have. The guy on the right hand side, Gary Hill, the guy that looks like Indiana Jones, he has the normally wears the Indiana Jones hat anyway. But the picture of some of the students there we have. The guy on the right hand side is Hal Ferguson. He is the Barra Valley coordinator for the work there. 
Uh, some of those guys have some great looking ties, especially the guy right there on the end. You know, he's got a short one. This is a school picture of the School of Preaching grounds, the classrooms, the libraries, the offices, and so on and so forth. And we also have a student lounge for them right there. You see the thatch roof building? It's a place for them to kick back and relax. It's nice for them. This is a picture of some of the students studying the Word of God. Now, also at the Chamala Mission, we have the hospital. Now, back when the Tanzanian government took over from the British, the, the religious groups had to register with the government. In order for a religious organization to register with the government, the re religious institution had to have a benevolent work. Guy Caskey, Elder Eccles, Andrew Connolly, they came up with the genius idea of starting a clinic with a man named Frank Black came over there and was the first doctor. Started a clinic where he worked from sun up to sundown just trying to treat the local problems they had medically. That clinic has grown to now a 120 bed hospital. It is the only hospital within 50 miles of the mission. It is uh, the oldest mission hospital associated with the Churches of Christ. There's some more hospitals over in Nigeria where I've been working at for the last several years. Uh, but this one in Tanzania, the one in Chamala, is the oldest one associated with the Church of Christ. Now listen, 2,000 plus babies delivered each year right there to Chamala Mission. 2,000 plus babies. That's a lot of kids being delivered there at the hospital. At the hospital, we treat primarily HIV and malaria patients. Malaria, as you know, is... is uh, Contracted by mosquito bites. There's a lot of folks over there that suffer <coughs> from these ailments. That the hospital is able to make a difference in their lives. A couple of pictures. This is the front of the hospital. You see the patient waiting area right there, where they can go and sit and wait for their name to be called. But if you look around the outside of the right there, the, the walls there, that is the uh, the dental offices, that's the, the children's wards, the maternity wards, uh, all the different clinics they have there. It is a full-fledged hospital. There are two Tanzanian doctors there. There are other nurses that work there. Harding University takes nursing students each May for six weeks to the Chamala Mission to work there to get a taste of third world medicine. A school, a medical school in Ireland sends about 10 to 15 doctor students, medical students, to go and work in a third world medicine setting, and the Jamal Mission is one of the places they go to. This is a fantastic hospital, which is able to make a difference in the lives of people that live there. There's a picture of a man with his son trying to make a difference in their lives. Picture some of the hospital equipment there, Inside of the hospital, it, you know, it may look uh, older, but it's making a good difference there. The primary and the secondary school. Now, there was a problem in, uh, in Tanzania at Shamala. One of the elders of the New York Avenue Church went over there and saw that there's a, a serious need for education. You know, we in America, we stress education. We always want our children to do good at school, right? And we want our children to go get a college education. Those things are good and wonderful. But there is 75 to 80 percent of the people of Tanzania who cannot read and write English. And you know what? They can't read and write their own language. There's a serious need for education in Tanzania. And so they started the primary school, the Jerry Herring Primary School, which is one of the top rated schools in the nation. Every year in America, we have what's called a benchmark exam, where they take a benchmark to kind of see where everybody's at in, in, the, in the public schools. Now, over there in Chamala, we have something very similar. In the, in the primary school, it goes up to seventh grade. At the end of the seventh grade year, you take an exam. The student takes an exam. If they pass the exam, they're able to go on to eighth grade, which is secondary school, right? On average, on schools throughout Tanzania, one or two students pass that seventh grade exam. Currently, right now, in primary school at Chamal, we have 100% of 
100% of our students are passing that exam. Folks, that tells you what kind of difference that is making in the lives of boys and girls in another country. Now, much like CRA, you know, CRA provides a good spiritual foundation for their life, right? Shake your head like this if you agree with that. Yeah, I bet you. What if we could take CRA and take it to another country and do the same thing with them? You think about your children, right? You think about your children that you have sent to CRA, that you have made sure that they have good spiritual foundation. What if we could do the same thing in another country? That is what we're doing. We are teaching them good, sound Bible classes each and every day. Whether they're Christian, Muslim, pagan, it doesn't matter. We're teaching them what the Word of God says. And they take that truth back to their families and the villages to be able to discern what is right and wrong. Good foundation for kids. The primary school has about 500 students. It goes grades 1 through 7 on the American system. The secondary school has 250 students, <coughs> grades 8 through 11. There's a picture of the primary school, some of the buildings there. This is not all of the buildings, as you can probably imagine. There's a lot of them. Primary school. The kids come in and out each and every day. Picture some of the students in class, some of their teachers. The secondary school is a is a just like a high school would have today. Science buildings, math buildings, uh, English rooms, all kinds of different classrooms. We're trying to build. Not only do we want to give them a good sound of Bible education, we also have to equip these young men and women to be good workers in the church. You know, if we want the church to support itself, right, in five or ten years, we've got to give the students the tools to be able to get a good job, and if that student had the tools to get a good job, then later on, they can support the works of the church so that the church can be self-supporting. Secondary school, there's more building in the secondary school, so there's a picture of the inside of the classroom. Now, the Wagner family. Uh, my family's right back here. We're glad to be here tonight. You know, as we know, we we uh, we grew up this congregation. Right? I know many of you guys. I know many of you uh, by name. Some of you may not know me. I've been gone for about eleven years. I'm glad to be back. I've been preaching at the Gainesville Church as Chuck said for nine years. Resigned there in July so that I can focus on fundraising efforts for this great work. Now, why are we going? Right? I'm just a local boy. I'm just a local boy who's, you know, doing the best we can. Just a little old boy from Paragon. Well, why are we going? Folks, there is a need for workers in the kingdom of God. Right? There is a need for workers in the kingdom of God. And if you don't know that, and I'm not just talking about Shamala, I'm talking about Center Hill, Arkansas. I'm talking about Paragol, Arkansas. Europe, Africa, wherever you see a spot on the map, there is a need for workers to go. And folks, that workers comes from you. And so I was presented with a need. There is a need for workers at the Shamala Mission. Currently, a man named Bill and Cindy Stinson. They are the administrators of the mission work right now for the last four years. Cindy and Bill are in their 60s, right? Cindy's parents are still alive. They're in their 90s. They're getting into bad health, and they are in need, uh, Bill and Cindy feel like, for them to come back from Africa to live with them to take care of the, uh, her parents, which is, I think is a good thing. But if they're going to come back, who's going to run the mission, right? And so there's a need for me to go. As you know, as you may or may not know, I've been working in Nigeria for the last four or five, six years. We started a school of preaching over there. We've been working with local evangelistic uh, work, working with preachers and teachers, doing all kinds of different things, working with the Bear Valley School in, out of Denver, Colorado. There's a lot of things that I've been doing, especially the last five, six years, Involved with mission work. And folks, we're ready to take the next step. We feel like we're ready to take the next step. We have the experience. I have the education. We have a family who's excited and willing to go. <coughs> Renee is a registered nurse who works up here at the Paragon Hospital. Uh, she has a uh, she works in the OB department, delivering babies. Right? 
And so, you know, I am you know, going to work at the School of Preaching or at directing the overall mission of the, uh, directing the overall work of the mission. Renee's going to uh, homeschool the kids and also work in the hospital helping all those babies being delivered. The kids are looking forward to being able to share Jesus with the kids in the villages. <coughs> what will we do? Well, I will direct the overall mission. Now, there are Tanzanian brothers who are operating the different departments, like the hospital, school of preaching. You know, there is different Tanzanian local men who are running those areas, and they will simply report to me, and I'll just make sure that they're doing what they got to do to keep the mission mission going. I will also be teaching at the school of preaching uh, there at Shamala, but also perhaps other schools. Also leading by example in mission evangelism. Church planning, Bible studies, uh, you know, gospel meetings, those things where I'll be involved in as well. All the time going and trying to encourage brethren, but also trying to uh, make more disciples for Christ. Mm -hmm. Renee is going to homeschool the kids. We work at the hospital. Now, are we going to live in a mud hut? For that, that, question, that question has been asked me several times. You guys going to live in a mud hut? <laughs> uh, no, you know, we're not going to live in a mud hut. The Black House is named after the first doctor that came to the Chamala Mission. That was his house. It was built back in the 60s. This is going to be our house. It is ready for us now, and we're going to move into this house. You can't see the picture very well, but it's... It's there. It's a nice four-bedroom home. It has running water and hot water and, you know, no air conditioning, but uh, it'll be all right. Uh, the climate itself is not nearly that bad. Let's just say uh, the lowest it gets is 45 degrees and the hottest it gets is 95 degrees. Uh, and so it, not, not that bad at all, right? What is our plan? Well, right now, as you can guess, what I'm doing right now, we're in the fundraising stage. I'm going around talking to different churches, making phone calls, bugging the fire out of here, uh, Gerald Howard over here, uh, and men like Gerald Howard, to try to get myself into congregations to talk to them about the work. Folks, this is what missionaries do, and this is all about it. And I have learned a lot about this process and be able to the process of fundraising. Learned a lot about this in this. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now, fundraising stage. Uh, move preparations, spring 2012. We had two kids' uh, passport photos made yesterday. This coming week, we'll have some more kids' passport photos made. Uh, me and my wife already have our passports. So that's some of the things we're going to be doing this spring. Uh, and then it says move in June or July 2012. Actually, the date we're going to move is June 10th. That is five months from Tuesday. Five months from Tuesday. And so that is why I'm doing here tonight. I'm glad to be here. Uh, once we get there in June, we will be there for at least three years. At least three years. So you're not going to have to hear from me, Daryl, for uh, at least a couple of years anyway. All right? What do we need? Well, <coughs> right now, travel expenses and salary funds kind of help with uh, what's going on. I'm not able to work too much. I'm driving a school bus a little bit. My wife's working full time. We're scraping by as best we can. But what we need, folks, is one time funds, like money for tickets, entry visas, uh, shots, and so on, so on, like that, movie containers. Uh, those things are kind of one time funds that are needed for. Also, we need some monthly support for our work fund, which pays for fuel for the car that makes us go to where we got to go, uh, telephone, postage, things like that. Uh, we also need some personal salaries so we can put some food on the table, right? Now, how can you get involved? You can be a monthly or one-time supporter. Now, I'm talking to you as the church at Center Hill, but I'm also talking to you as individuals. I want to ask you to pray for the work in Tanzania. Pray for our safety. Pray for our fundraising efforts. When we get over there, pray that we will uh, be safe from you know whatever is going to be on over there. Pray for our work, that we will be successful in that work. I will ask you to pray. I'm also going to ask you to get yourself involved in the work. You know, how many of you uh, can teach in the school of preaching? You know, how many of you can teach in the school of preaching, right? Well, there's nobody raising your hand. But how many people can turn a ratchet? How many people can do some book work? How many people here tonight can push a wheelchair from one room to another? Go 
Well, most of us can do something like that, right? Folks, if you can turn a ratchet, if you can do anything, I'll put you to work at the Chamala Mission. Come on over, I'll put you up, I'll make sure you got food to eat, a place to stay, and work to do. We can come over and see the work. Talk to the folks here at Center Hill and get the congregation involved in work. Now, I'm not just talking about, you know, monthly support. I'm talking about getting the congregation involved. The church at New York Avenue down in Arlington, Texas, that oversees the work. They're sending their entire youth group over there this summer. Because, yep, because they are actively involved in that work. Get the congregation involved in the work. Come visit the Chamala Mission, folks. It is a fantastic work. If you've never been to a mission field, go. It will change your life. This is our website, writertz.webs.com, and also the ChamalaMission.com. You can visit those websites and take a look at those and have any questions. Uh, there's some question and answers on the website, but also um, I will be out after church, out in the foyer. If you have any questions, uh, then we will uh, ask those questions. I'm going to have out some cards real quickly. Uh, and then uh, if you don't mind, whether you want to fill it out or not, just take a couple of those and just kind of one per family. <coughs> if, you, if you don't mind, fill one of those out. There is a place on this side for your email newsletter and reports. If you want to get our email newsletter, you just fill out your email address right there. And on the back side, if you would like to be an individual supporter, you can fill out the back side and just hand that to me. Right. How are we doing on time? Doing right on time? Hey, we're doing fantastic. I never thought I would get this done in 22 minutes. I did it this morning at 45. <laughs> and so I'm glad I was able to do it in 22 minutes. All right. Thank you very much.